So, what do you think about where biomedical research is now? Where would you like to see it go? It's a lot of money, there's a lot of power in there. I don't think it's an appropriate question for uh, a YouTube thing about the Full Moon Festival. Is that what you're saying? Or I didn't know this I was about the you're, Full Moon you're Festival. Asking, well, this is, this, is this a media thing? No, this, this, is, is, for, this is for the university. Yeah, the university. So that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, I, so. it's, it's, it's a good question, but biomedical research, you know, this is the, the path of contemporary medicine, and that is we try to find all kinds of explanations for the human condition and all of its illnesses. Uh, we've done remarkable things that were previously unheard of. We can transplant virtually every organ. You can electrically stimulate an arm with an implant. Uh, but there are some conditions, especially chronic conditions, that don't lend themselves well to continued research. We have to translate what it is we already know. We know, for example, that there are diabetics who are highly susceptible, and people of color and uh, people who are poor have a disproportionately high incidence of amputation, for example. We don't need more research there. What we need is more practical applications. So people don't have to wait to be able to get seen and to be suffering from the complications of their disease. 85% of the healthcare budget is spent for the treatment of chronic disease. And the best way to treat chronic disease is not by more research. The best way to treat chronic disease is for patients to understand that they have to become the principal agents in their own healing. We know that now and we ought to be spending more time doing it. So how do we that tie that into our posterior? The Full Moon Festival. Yes, sir. So here we come together for three days and people are going to talk to each other about how it is they dealt with what they're looking at without having to come to hospitals. People who have similar illnesses, people who are in support groups and self-help groups, people will open themselves up to making themselves available to others because they've walked this walk and are willing to share the data instead of waiting until you become so sick that you have to see a provider who is just going to provide symptomatic relief. And maybe the $10 million that uh, would come to Albuquerque could fund 10 different uh, units to explore that, to explore, I mean, others may not like to call it biomedical research, they don't want to think of love research as biomedical research, maybe because there's not enough gadgets involved. But, I mean, I'm, I'm doing the Full Moon Festival, one for the thrill and fun, raw funded, and two, because it will make it possible for me to see patients again and to teach what we do, service-oriented love medicine. And it will provide a chance for us to explore what 200,000 people can offer to a community in a weekend. And at the same time, bring in $10 million to that community to help the underserved, at least get colonoscopy. And we don't need more biomedical research to tell us that if you reach out and touch people in loving ways, that it makes a difference, not only to them, but to you. And that if we can find ways to fill our cups, to recharge our batteries, that it not only makes us feel better, but it makes other people feel better as well. And we live in a civilization in which our batteries are becoming perpetually drained. You've got to reach out your cup from a place of fullness. Nobody can be suckled on demand. We need to find more ways to fill ourselves in loving ways so that we can touch other people in quite the same way. And what? not to mention lighten up. <laughs> drop, drop. <laughs> what kind of a response have you received so far to the Full Moon Festival? Well, I've lectured about it all over the world and I get a lot of hands go up saying they can't wait for it to happen. They're Mooners. A lot of people are Mooners long before a festival came along, some will be first-time winners. So I think that since for 10 years people have turned us down, we're going, wow, we're offering $10 million to serve the poor of their community, and they're wondering whether or not it's dirty to show our butts. So now it looks like it might happen. And uh, I can guarantee you, if, if, if after today we say it's happening in this city, the wires are going to go nuts. <laughs> Everybody's going to look at the morning. That's not what this is about, right? It's the oldest vaudeville trick in history. It's just a way for us at the end to poke fun, both at ourselves and to laugh, and to remind us that we all have one, we can all be one, and to lighten up, not to take ourselves so seriously.
a practical uh, element, sorry, to break down the boundaries that separate us, to become more permeable, to become a community that responds to each other's needs in loving ways, instead of coming together in response to misery, disaster, epidemic. If people want to find out more about the, um, <laughs> the full moon, where can they go? Uh -huh. Can't say it without smiling. <laughs> www.fullmoonfest.org. Thank, Thank you. For your Bring your butts. Thank you. <laughs>